we started with very good uh, intention of immunizing about 30 crore people, that is 300 million people, requiring almost about 600 million doses. And before we reached that target, uh, government added the additional uh, sort of uh, groups of people, starting from 45 onwards, and then uh, for last one and a half month, 18 years upwards knowing well that that much vaccine is not available. So I think that was one of the greatest, uh, I think, lesson that we must learn from this particular experience that whatever we decide, we must take into account what is the availability of the product and then decide to deploy it judiciously. There will be a lot of population who will be still susceptible, even if you are vaccinated, and you are still likely to get the disease and you can still continue to be a carrier of the disease and transmit it to the other population. Even today, there are almost 50% of our medical and paramedical staff who is not immunized because they did not come up in the first uh, phase to get themselves immunized. And as we have seen that the mutation that we have seen, this double mutation in India that B1171, is definitely much more infective and particularly in the second wave as you have seen that the younger age group people are affected more as compared to the first wave. I had taken COVID shield but my wife and her friends and a lot of other friends they insisted on co-vaccine because by that time this opinion was building that co-vaccine is safer. Now my son is uh, got an opinion that Sputnik, I'll wait for Sputnik. I want to take Sputnik because it's better. Yeah. So, so do you think this is this sort of debate or discussion or has got any logic behind it, scientific logic, comparing between the existing vaccines? It is too early or yes, there are some data to suggest that yes, certain vaccines might be safer and better than the other ones. I personally feel that it is too early and too immature to compare that which vaccine is good and which is not good. It's only the time that will tell us after we monitor the people at least for two to three years after vaccination. From Indian perspective, Dr. Jadav, yes. uh, these variants uh, are creating problem in vaccination? It, they can create problem, yes, certainly. But at least I think from the experience, whether it is a Brazilian variant, whether it is a South African variant or the uh, UK variant and now the Indian variant, the double, double mutant, uh, all these four of them are being neutralized. So regarding you would have also come across a lot of uh, uh, myths and uh, wrong facts presented about vaccination. Sir. Yes. So out of those highlights, what is your message to the people yeah, and our participants? About what the they should believe and what they should not believe. So from the data which is available from CDC, from uh, 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 NIH, the from WHO and other international organizations, uh, I think whatever vaccine is available, you should take it. Because all the vaccines which are licensed, they have been licensed using certain set of regulatory conditions and they have been licensed by the national control uh, authorities or the regulatory authorities. And sir, regarding this, again, this new thinking and talk discussions are happening that I have taken COVID shield or Covaxin and what's the harm Sputnik is coming, let's take Sputnik also. What is yeah. your advice in that? <laughs> I think they can take a Sputnik vaccine, but my advice will be to keep a gap of at least about nine months to a year after no. they have completed their complete uh, two vaccination dose schedule. Dr. Rai, I just wanted to know, we are discussing about this sudden death and, uh, you know, people of the, uh, you know, the younger group uh, uh, bearing the branch. How far is um, cytokine storm and happy hypoxia involved in all this story? I see, uh, happy hypoxia means uh, you are unable to recognize that body yes. is, um, um, there is a deficiency of oxygen in the body. Uh, so, um, if you are not measuring, uh, then in many cases uh, you are unable to detect that person is um, suffering from uh, severe oxygen deficiency in the body. Uh, and the, the time you know that um, that person is um, having this uh, hypoxia, severe oxygen deficiency, by that time it's already too late.
the covid appropriate behavior always play a very important role but see the facts india passed major festive season and few state election like bihar state election was during that time and during um, um, <coughs> so during, during either festival season or it was very uh, almost impossible to maintain covid appropriate behavior there could be a, any magnitude of this third wave so it's difficult to say uh, and it's really premature to say that there will be a third wave and that will be very dangerous that will be very dangerous for children i have my reservations about the younger age group because younger age group as uh, dr mahajan also brought out uh, he said uh, that most of the people uh, younger age group we should look into the comorbidities why we should uh, have more data Uh, the, uh, we should analyze the data more okay, why the young people uh, are succumbing this year whether they are neglected the other health services like care of diabetes care of hypertension if we take uh, like we did a study he brought out very well we did a study in a rural area also we found 10% people are diabetics and the age group 35 to 45 years that is the young diabetics 50% were not aware of the diabetic status 50% were not aware of the hypertensive status and this one year of lockdown and uh, this type of uh, mental stress must have aggravated so many diseases for which the treatment is neglected so what is your uh, recommendation and uh, suggestions for our uh, participants and uh, viewers particularly from the point of view of various type of uh, uh, confusion and apprehension they have got to so the uh, like yeah. younger people also those who are having say hypertensive young diabetics are there i mean why we are having so many cases of fungal infection because they are diabetics who are young people they are recovering and they they must be having diabetes which is not there. so this uh, general health care is more important and those younger people who are with obese obesity is a major factor obesity or other hypertensive diabetics other diseases they should get priority and those who are young and healthy can wait for that one cities the crisis is over i mean the vaccine crisis is over and may not be required also and as i said those who have already recovered they should not get the priority they can wait another 6 months so dr banerji i just wanted one one more question dr is that in the first episode of uh, the samvad that we had you are a very strong opponent yeah. against the lockdown do you still hold that view yeah. or uh, have you diluted your view no i have not diluted my view i am still against lockdown in fact the problem we have, have the second wave is we have we have not prevented a uh, transmission we have just delayed it and we got it with interest because a large chunk of the population was kept susceptible had we not had lockdown this infection would have carried out at a low ea so that it would have settled so a large uh, number of people were left vulnerable i mean you cannot uh, stop the transmission neither you can uh, i mean lockdown is not a solution actually what is your uh, uh, sort of uh, analysis on the covid 2.0 situation particularly where the government and the overall public health system has gone wrong as an as a view from an uh, educationist from a media specialist and uh, from as a general public also what do you think where we would have okay. gone wrong and where we could have done better communication failure has been there you know there has been a huge communication failure whether it is on the part of the government whether it is on the part of the medical fraternity whether it is on the part of the ngos i mean i somewhere feel that and of course the teachers education we all are responsible uh, even the media there is no effective mechanism to bust fake news to expose fake news there was a lot of fake information disinformation misinformation all kinds of handles spreading all kinds of stuff about medicines i remember the kind of you know people had uh, suspicions about vaccination very baseless uh, you know but they are all having it in the rural areas people are not taking vaccinations people are not going to hospitals on time let us be infrastructurally prepared and let us be prepared communication wise are we able to really put up a robust communication system to the people unless we reach out with the correct information this crisis was unprecedented and uh, no one expected we were totally caught unaware and that's why it became a huge severe crisis but the message from it is that we need to be careful much more careful in the future and we need to work together as individuals as organizations we need to work together 
to counter any such crisis and fight out of it successfully in future in a much better way and along with the government along with the uh, private corporate sector and voluntary organizations